Hello, school directors. Uh, welcome to today's video. The purpose of this video is to highlight student perspective when it comes to the various position proposals that you will be debating in just nine days at the General Assembly. Um, what we have asked each student to respond to is the question of what they think you should be considering when it comes to navigating reopening schools and the 2020-2021 school year. So Amina, would you go ahead and kick us off, please? Yes. Hi, my name is Amina Hussein, and I am a student representative of the Everett Public School School Board. And the topic or the point that I will be focusing more on is racial equity. Um, as a student leader, it's very important to me to make sure that everyone feels safe, heard, and important. Racial equity is a hot topic that is being discussed everywhere. But why does that impact our students of color? Being a student of color, I see firsthand instances where teachers don't know how to understand and intervene certain situations when administrators downplay situations that make students of color feel less than. Making sure that we dismantle these certain practices that have been cemented into our education system is very vital in making sure that our minority students are feeling safe. Though we look over it, a majority of the time, there is structural systemic barriers and institutionalized racism that is preventing our students from succeeding. We know this and we should acknowledge that. Washington State should be a leader in school racial equity. We need to set an example to other states and we need to show our students that we care, value, and truly want them to succeed. This decision will be made one day, but if we choose to kick the can down the road, it will hurt our students of color the most. It starts with you. We need racial equity in our schools. The state of Washington should indefinitely provide funding for teachers and others who work with students, racial equity training. Thank you, Amina. Uh, Finn, would you go ahead and go? Sure, thank you, Logan. My name is Finn O'Donnell, and I'm a senior at Port Townsend High School in Port Townsend. I've been lucky enough to live here, an area with an incredible property tax base all my life, and I've benefited from it. More specifically, I've benefited from the school system that those property taxes fund. And even more specifically, the health services that those property taxes fund. Several years ago, an intergovernmental panel in Jefferson County proposed a levy to fund school-based health clinics in local high schools. A one-tenth of 1% 1 tax on assessed property values funds a therapist for our three county high schools, as well as reproductive health services, including testing and some prescriptions. At PTHS, you can see a therapist for free completely confidentially during school hours. We're quite unique among rural districts and even some urban districts, but that's the problem I want to address here. Pre-COVID, the National Education Association promoted what it calls the 10-minute rule. The amount of homework you should have daily should equal your number grade, 9, 10, 11, 12, times 10. That means that seniors should have about two hours of homework a night and 10 hours a week. In reality, a poll from Statistic Brain found that high school students actually have more than three hours of homework a night on average, with 11th graders reporting the most. Now, during COVID, I have three days of, uh, per week of homework, plus severely limited social interactions. For an extrovert like me, that's really tough. So what does this mean for mental health? It's impossible to prove that our school system pre-COVID caused depression, anxiety, or suicidal tendencies. Had I been stressed, anxious, and even depressed about school? Sure. But additionally, it wasn't certainly the sole cause of social anxiety or depression. And it's impossible to prove that our school system pre-COVID caused depression, anxiety, or suicidal tendencies. Had I been stressed, anxious, or even depressed about school? Yes. But school certainly wasn't the sole cause of social anxiety or depression in American teens. Here's what we do know. The Washington State Healthy Youth Survey found that in 2018, at least one in three youth in grades eight to 12 reported feeling sad or hopeless. One in five high school students had seriously considered suicide in the past year, and one in 10 had attempted. And as the amount of homework rose, so did general feelings of anxiety. 41% of Washington State seniors who were supposed to have two hours of homework nightly reported feeling sad or hopeless nearly every day in a two week period. Under my school district's virtual learning system, I have three days of homework per week. So take a moment to think here. Were you happier this year? Did lockdown make you feel better, less stressed, and more free? For most of us, no. With almost no students in person in 2020, 
therapy and mental health services are more difficult to provide. But with almost no students in person in 2020, they're also more important than ever before. This morning, I received an email from the school district informing me that there had been a death in the community. A seventh grade student took his own life on September 10th, 2020, on the third day of our school year. As most of you know, Washington State currently funds 0.07 therapists per 600 students. Most districts simply can't afford to pay $150,000 for a single therapist. And even if they can afford a single therapist, that one therapist simply can't handle 600 patients. This is why position 35, supporting and funding school-based health services like counseling, telemedicine, and reproductive health will be especially important this year. Additionally, fully funding staffing levels and pensions under 38 and 45 will aid districts and free up cash for additional services. And position 56, spanning mid-year budget cuts, will be essential to ensure our schools can keep providing the same services year round. So General Assembly, knowing what you know about mental health and how school impacts it, it's clear that we need adequate funding for student support systems now more than ever before. Thank you. Thank you both very much for being vulnerable and sharing your perspectives today with our members. I know that our members greatly appreciate that. And to school directors, thank you for watching and we will see you on September 25th for our General Assembly.